Welcome to the May CAC meeting. Um, I'd like to go ahead and call it to order. Um, we will start um, with a roll call. Um, I will go through the list. John Coyne. George Edwards. Here. Manika Gupta. Here. Ethne Good. I'm here. Brittany Clinton Hill. Here. Judy Hotchkiss. Here. Amanda King. Rizalba Ledesma. I saw like yeah. Here. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Anton Musab. Here, I see you. I'm Salvador here. Patino. I'm here, guys. Sorry. John Rolfling. Here. Curtis Walker. Present. And Tasha Wilson. Present. Wonderful. Um, we do have a couple new members um, who are with us today. So um, if uh, Manica um, would like to just do a little brief intro, um, we'll start with you. Yeah, hi, I'm uh, Manika Gupta. Um, I um, graduated from um, University of North Carolina School of the Arts uh, in a scene design program two years ago. Um, moved to New York as a freelance designer, but then moved back quickly last year and uh, here in Winston now forever. Nice to meet you all. All right, Curtis Walker, if you wanna introduce yourself to the group. Uh, I am Curtis Walker. Um, I'm new to Winston. I moved down here in 2012. Uh, just graduated from Forsyth Technical Community College. I work for Corning and uh, happy to be here. Wonderful. And then John, um, if you want to introduce yourself. I'm John Rothling. I'm director of Rinalda Gardens. Um, grew up in Greensboro, moved back to this area in 2008 when my wife uh, started at the Senior Botanical Garden in Kernersville, but uh, we're, we're both garden fanatics and uh, love being in the area. Wonderful. All right, the first item um, will be the approval of the summary minutes from the March 24th meeting. Um, were there any corrections or additions anyone would like to make? If not, if I can get a, um, a motion to approve. So move. And then a second. A second, that's Wilson. Wonderful. All right, let's go through the list of names again. Uh, John isn't here. So George Edwards. I approve. Manica Gupta. I approve. Oh, wonderful. Ethne Good. Approve. Uh, Dr. Brittany, Brittany Clinton Hill. Approve. Judy Hotchkiss. Approve. Amanda is not here. So Rosalba Ladisma. Approve. Okay. Anton Musa. Approve. So here, John Roefley. Approve. Curtis Walker. Approve. And Tasha Wilson. Approve. Wonderful. So we'll move on to committee reports. Um, we did um, have a TAPR meeting this month. We had two projects to review. Um, one was the Sam Lake Boat Storage Building and the other was the Bellevue Recreation Center renovations. Um, we will start with the Sam Lake Boat Storage Building. So let me share my screen. Hopefully everyone can see that. All right, so here's Salem Lake to orient everyone. This is Salem Lake Road. Here's the uh, parking lot and playground. Right here, you can see the Salem Lake Trail. You go in, here's the parking lot and the marina center. The dam is right off the picture there and there's the pier. Um, this will be the general location in this little nook here for the building. Zoom in, um, you can see a little bit better. So it'll sort of be tucked in between um, the trees line 
sort of triangle area right here. Um, something to note is we do have two um, power lines, power poles right here that they will have to work around. Um, and this is a picture of the site. I'm actually standing pretty much in line with those, um, the power lines there. I'm just backing out some. This is looking across Salem Lake, Salem Road there, Salem Lake Road to, to across the street to where the boat, the launch area is. And this is looking back at, uh, towards the uh, Marina Center. Here is the site plan. It's a fairly simple site plan. So we just, again, we have the two power poles. They have to remain 15 feet outside of, um, from those power poles. And then they have a proposed building pad here in this location. It'll be um, 65 and a half feet long and uh, 28 and a half feet wide. And what they are proposing to do is basically do a 28 uh, foot wide by 60 foot um, foot long by 10 foot high um, metal building. Um, and it will be in this green color here. Um, they will be at the highest point at the peak in the middle, will be 14 feet high. It'll have one roll up door on one side and then one other door sort of um, to allow for another access point. And that was essentially it. It's a pretty utilitarian um, building, metal building. Here's another, here's another photo of it. Um, the TAPR committee comments, you know, the, TAPR, the committee was pleased that it was a simple utilitarian design for the building. Um, and they liked the fact that it was a neutral color that will sort of blend in with the trees surrounding it. Um, and they were pleased that the building was metal, which um, will um, basically be long lasting material and won't require a lot of maintenance. And staff did not have any comments. And I will stop sharing to see if anyone has any comments. Is that gonna be for canoes and kayaks? Yes. Like things that don't have a motor? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll be for the, it's basically for the Wake Forest rowing. Oh, um, oh, okay. Um, they will be using it. Um, they use the um, lake for their practice, uh, essentially their practice field, but practice lake, I guess. Are those the only boats that are ever gonna go in it? It's, is it owned by the city or Wake Forest? It'll, it's being done by Wake Forest, but it's on city property, so. Uh, will they have a paved drive over to the asphalt? Or a uh, paved no. Driveway? No, there will be no additional paths or anything. It'll basically just be the building. So um, it'll sort of hopefully just sort of blend into the surroundings with the green colors, but there won't be anything else associated with it. So no bushes, no, si no signage? Mm -mm. Okay. Is the building going to be lighted or heated? As far as I know, no. I don't know if um, if the applicant can speak to any lighting or any. Um, I can speak to it. No, there's there's no electrical or or power or water going to the building. It's just a storage shed. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else have any other comments? If not, um, can I get a motion to approve the comments as presented? I submit the motion. Or just welcome. And a second? I second. All right. And again, down the list we go. Um, George Edwards. I got your hand there. We're gonna we're gonna say you're good. Yes, yes. <laughs> Here's my thumb. <laughs> Manika Gupta. Yes. Bethany Good. Approve. Uh, Dr. Brittany Clinton Hill. Approve. Judy Hodgkiss. Approve. Rosalba Ladisma. Approve. Anton Musel. Approve. John Roffling. Approved. 
Curtis Walker. Approve. And Tasha Wilson. Approve. Wonderful. So um, the CAC has approved um, the comments and recommendations as presented by the TAPR committee and um, the staff. So um, for the, your new to this process, so basically, um, I will essentially uh, create a memo for you. But you're from here on, you're, you're you've you've been reviewed by the CAC. So um, that's sort of the end of the process. Okay. Thank you so much for your help. I appreciate everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank well, you. Thank you. Welcome. Okay. So we will. Hmm. If I can get my stuff in order, we will um, move on now to uh, Bellevue. All right, so this is renovation of the Bellevue Recreation Center. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, Bellevue is sort of at the corner of Moravia Street and Burgundy um, Street and sort of southeast Winston-Salem. Um, this is Interstate 40, sort of the East Clemensville ramp um, onto 40 is just off the picture here. Um, Thomas Hill Road is to the east. Sprague Street is to the north um, to get folks sort of oriented. We'll zoom in here um, to see sort of a close-up of what's built um, on the park. The park is accessed off of Burgundy Street. It has one parking area right here. Um, this is the building right now, the recreation center here. This is actually an out as a ball court, covered ball court. Um, there's a playground in this area, and this is a small um, sort of shelter area right here. And they have a small picnic shelter uh, picnic table right there, sorry. And this is the building currently, as it stands right now, it was built in the mid eighties and it's about 3,500 square feet. This is the general um, area where um, they will be building a new um, gymnasium. It's sort of, kind of beyond these trees there, you have ball fields. And this is that covered, um, basketball court area um, that currently exists. And this is the parking lot. So this is the site plan. Um, they will not be um, doing any sort of work with the playground or the existing small shelter area. The access will remain off of Burgundy Street and they will not be expanding um, the parking area. There is an ad alternate to the um, project that will repave and restripe the parking area. The actual um, existing uh, recreation center will remain. They will basically sort of renovate the inside and then basically reskin the outside of the building. Um, they will be adding an 8,000 square foot new gymnasium um, sort of to the north here on the lot north of the recreation center. And then the covered ball court will remain, but it'll be repurposed um, to be an outdoor work area um, to coincide with the SOAR program um, that the city runs out of the recreation center. And the SOAR program stands for Successful Outcomes After Release. And essentially it's a program to help um, former um, offenders who've coming out of um, incarceration sort of re acclimate into the workforce. Um, so that's that. So again, here's the floor plan. You can see this is the ball court. You can see an interior shot for the gymnasium. We have two restrooms here. There is an ad alternate to expand the restrooms up in this area. And then they will sort of be reconfiguring the space within the actual rec center for um, classrooms and computer space and offices for that SOAR program. And then again, here's the open covered work area. And these are renderings. This is the main entrance will remain the same. They will provide a new covered canopy. They will be um, removing the um, overhangs that are currently existing and basically extending the walls up. 
uh, essentially to address an issue where they have a security issue with people getting on the roof. And so this will address that security issue. They will be, again, reskinning the um, outdoor exterior portion of the recreation center with metal panels and sort of a blue and gray color. And then they will extend this sort of concrete masonry um, unit here up to sort of allow for new space for a new signage. This is the gymnasium. It will be the out exterior will be brick along the bottom and this will be composite board or hardy plank essentially um, here for the remaining um, remainder of the exterior materials. On the north side, they will have uh, windows and then they also have this sort of art mural wall that will be determined at a later date, but this will be an art wall here. Um, they also, this is a, um, up through here, they'll also have more windows to allow for more natural light. This is sort of the work yard, um, outdoor work area um, configuration. They will surround the work area with anti-climb fencing um, to, to basically secure whatever um, the individuals are working on within that space and provide a level of security that nothing will be tampered with or stolen in that area. And this is just- What another. are the nature of those work projects? I couldn't, honestly, I couldn't speak to you as to what exactly they would be working on, um, what they, they would be, I really don't know. Amy, would you, uh, Vern McKissick, you're the architect, should I address that now or later? You can go ahead and address it now. Okay. Yeah, the, uh, the, the program is primarily a building trades and really focused on carpentry. Uh, as so, it's a uh, it's small building. It, intent is, be, is to train them into outdoor uh, building maintenance in that, that kind of a direction. So uh, two by fours, you know, uh, sections of buildings, you know, mock-ups of things as we understand it. They haven't really been able to do that much in the current building. Uh, they have to tear down every day, put things away, and because the same space is shared for any other recreation program in there. Are there other programs in the building other than the one for offenders? No specific training programs of that sort. Uh, it has been, uh, the interior reconfiguration is doubling the size of the kitchen. Uh, it is enlarging the size of the of the main gathering space, which is currently being used for SOAR. That's the piece you see in the center with the high bulbs. That's actually uh, has kind of some interesting, yeah. strange curved windows, and we'll be replacing those with uh, cow wall to allow illumination. It's got wonderful timbers in there, are, uh, 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 wood uh, laminate beams. But uh, beyond that, there will be a computer classroom space that's available, intended to be used for after hours. Uh, so we tried to stay as flexible as possible, uh, and there'll be a classroom that will be shared. And then the basketball court is for the neighbor neighborhood? Uh, it will be for the neighborhood or any organized uh, program. One of the things that the basketball court, uh, it started off as a, a bit smaller than this, and it enlarged uh, at the request uh, of uh, council to add uh, two walking lanes around the perimeter. Mm -hmm. And that also I'll gave us a question. Ability. What's the volume yeah. of it and then what's the cost? Uh, pardon, the volume? No, he wanted to know the cost. Oh, the cost, yes. Uh, the project total project budget is uh, four million with all uh, materials in it. The um, uh, part of the original goal was to uh, get as much program as we could. And that's the reason the decision was made to not tear down the original building but instead look at do a uh, skinning and, and a retrofit because that allowed us and to also use the uh, outdoor work yard uh, in a secure mode as, as a project space. So we're trying to get maximum bang uh, and, and, uh, and, get a, and get a space that would eventually be able to accommodate 400 to 500 spectators. Uh, it's designed for future bleachers. That's why the uh, alternate for the uh, restroom expansions there as well. Mm -hmm. And is there any landscape involved with this pro with this project? There is some limited landscaping being done. Our drawing uh, C10, which was submitted, primarily focuses on the front of the building, 
where there are some timber uh, edging and some planting beds that's uh, kind of deteriorated. We're going to be coming back with some concrete uh, uh, plank type materials in there. Uh, beyond that, the primary uh, landscaping is going to be working with what's there now in order to uh, follow some of the uh, crime prevention uh, septic strategies of raising the uh, bottom branches of trees and, and uh, cutting bushes down to a height of uh, no more than about 30 inches. Okay. Um, there'll be some site lighting put in as well. Um, that was, of course, one of the concerns you have at any public facility anymore that wasn't necessarily being thought about in the early 80s. Right. And you do have some trees there somewhere because I didn't see anything on the rendering. Yeah, there's, no. there's quite a few existing trees on the site. Um, the intent is to remove very few of them as you're looking at the drawing there to the left. Uh, of the uh, upper corner of where the gym is being added, there are three or four memorial trees that the Parks Department is looking into either relocating or quite possibly just buying a new and rededicating. Pretty much from there, from the left of our building over to the property line are a number of memorial trees that have been planted over time. So we were also trying to work to mitigate the impact on those given that there are still people that are very attached to the meaning behind them. Yes. Thank you. Um, I just had one follow-up question because um, I, I think I heard approximately that like, the building can house about 500 people for whatever event, and you said $4 million for this project. And so the question I had was, if you're paying $4 million, I, I'm guessing that's building um, labor cost material, and I, it seems like that would be a premium rate. And then is the building currently being used at that rate, is that is that many, you know, is that the volume that we're getting? I, I don't know, like how many people are using this building on a regular, you know, I guess a basis and then to pay 4 million. I think it's right. a great idea, but I was just curious. Yeah, the, uh, the intent is to expand programming at the site. Right now, uh, the size of the space and the size of the kitchen does not really accommodate community gatherings, um, such things as, you know, uh, weddings, receptions, birthday parties, things of that nature, something they want to be able to bring in. Um, the, the outdoor covered area is not a full competition court in size. It's um, more like a middle school court. I think we are, our full length is 74 feet. It uh, doesn't have uh, much it, it hit clearances between 14 and 18 feet. So it's kind of a picnic pavilion that has been kind of used as a basketball outdoor court. So it's really been inadequate to be able to run any type of formal programming in. Um, so the Parks Department is really looking to enhance the services that they are able to offer at this end of the community. All right. So, but we say $4 million, that's really that really represents about $3,050,000 in construction. The rest is project-related costs, furniture, um, contingencies, so on and so forth. Thank you. Okay. So this is right here, this is just a side elevation of the building, and this would be if you were standing in the playground area looking um, sort of north at it or at the corner of um, Burgundy and Moravia, generally right. from, this, from this area here. And you had a big chainsaw and you cut down a whole lot of trees. Yeah. Which we're not proposing to do. Yeah. If we left the trees and you wouldn't see a whole lot of the building, to be honest with you. At least from that view. And then the TAPR comments, um, overall, they were pleased with the design um, of the project, um, particularly sort of the playfulness of the design, the use of color, and the integration of natural light into the design. Um, they love the idea of the mural wall um, on that north facade of the gymnasium. They did recommend incorporating the different color composite siding into the exterior of the gymnasium, and I'll show you um, what that means in a minute. Um, to sort of help tie the existing um, uh, center with the new gymnasium to sort of make a cohesive um, sort of overall project. And that would be without this extensive budget increase, that'd be a way for them to do it. And then um, they do like the fence material that um, was proposed for the outdoor workspace. They just would recommend that it's painted black. So it sort of just fades into view from, um, from folks. And this is sort of the idea, um, some photos here. These are sort of the multicolors, so the yen that they would use, which is sort of a mix of sort of blues and grays in that realm, and sort of somehow creating 
a little bit of a multiple multi look here. They sort of all fuzzy, but you can get a, a sense of what that could be and how that could sort of mix in with the stripes um, that are being used proposed for the existing structure. And the staff didn't have any comments. All right. Are there any other comments? I have a question about the repurposed area where the basketball court is, the covered court being repurposed for the SOAR program. My understanding is they're gonna be doing carpentry and things such as that in there. Is the purpose of the gating in order for them to secure their um, tools and their projects in progress? Because when we're thinking about serving formerly incarcerated individuals, I don't want them to feel like the place that they're being provided additional education and training, it has sort of a closed off feel with the gating. Right, I know that was something that we uh, we also were concerned with and why we tried to pick something that was a, an aesthetic type fence, but also not one that would go full height. It's not intended to be a cage, but it's if we're setting projects up there and they're doing mock-ups that are called multi-D projects, uh, very similar to what you would see at a vocational school, uh, career training center. They do have a lot of these covered canopies and most of this work wants to be outside in the, in the colder weather. So there will be, uh, there'll be several large uh, volume fans in the ceiling that I would call, they call them the, the you've seen the big uh, slow moving ones to get air movement in there. Uh, there'll be some power reels in for the tools to come down from, from above. So just enough stuff that really doesn't mix with just having random kids coming off the playground or, or whatever. So we were trying to make it a little more fun and I don't disagree with the black color, um, uh, but we were playing with the large strap, the large lettering to make that you know a little more uh, attractive as being something special as opposed to being you know caged off area, uh, but it's like I say we're trying to purpose what of what's already owned to to get a little bit more out of it. Long term, I wouldn't be surprised to see that that may occasionally still be able to be used as an outdoor gathering area, because we will have doors and any you know, exit doorways and things, and access into the building. So uh, we're trying to think what happens if the SOAR program moves to another location because it outgrows from success. It's kind of a neat mix of, of, of uses. <clears throat> Sounds like a challenge. Go ahead, Judy. What were you gonna say, Judy? I'm sorry. I just said uh, uh, getting those two things to come together is challenging. Um, and I see Ethany's point. Um, hopefully the interior is, is brightly colored as well, so it doesn't feel in any way prison-like. But uh, I understand the need for keeping their materials from walking overnight. Is there an opportunity to kind of, I, I know there's the, the struggle of you want to be able to see in, so in case someone's getting in there for security reasons, but to soften it with, you know, like not wisteria, but, you know, some flowering vines or something to kind of soften the, the hardness of the, of the fencing. Um, I think that'd be a wonderful and, and an inexpensive solution, especially given that we've got a good orientation on the uh, kind of east, south, east, east, southeast side of the building there. All right. Is there, are there any other comments? Um, well, just to clarify, were the program, um, the people who are in charge of the program and organizing it and everything, they had the ability to review this as well, that it would suit their needs. Oh, yes, yes. We've been through several reviews with yeah. Parks and Recreation uh, as, as well as, as the city engineer's office and, and so on. Um, the um, key thing here was that uh, both groups, the way we've laid this out, we have the ability for both groups to function concurrently at the site where right now it's an either or. 
Yeah. Uh, so the goal was to be able to have daytime programming in the gym and, and come in the main entrance and not interfere with what the other students, with the, uh, uh, the program participants are doing. So uh, uh, we did have at one point much larger addition for SOAR and a little bit more indoor space for them. But that was when the gym was was very small, no bleacher, future bleacher capacity and no walking track. So we've kind of been trading back and forth in their direction. Understood. Thank you. No. All right. Any other comments or recommendations? I'm not seeing any. Um, so we do have the recommendation to add some sort of flowering vine um, to the fencing material to sort of soften it up. Um, and so um, with that, um, do I have any motion or any other recommendations that folks would like to add to the TAPR comments? All right, can I get a motion to approve the so move. with the addition? This is Natasha Wilson, so move. Wonderful. Do I have a second? Second. All right. And we will go through the um, call again. John's not here. George Edwards. I approve. Uh, Manika Gupta. I love the idea of adding flowers and wine. Um, yeah, approve. Anthony Good. Approve. Uh, Dr. Brittany Clinton-Hill? Approved. Judy Hotchkiss? Approve. And it's not here. Rosalba Ledesma? Approve. Um, I believe Anton has dropped off. Let's see him? So it's not here. John Rothley? Approve. Curtis Walker? Approve. And Tasha Wilson? Approve. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, and I will be sending Thank out you. a memo um, with the list of um, recommendations and comments that we have. So, Thank yeah, you. Much appreciated. Thank you, everyone. Thank Keep you. up the good work. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Um, moving on to the Education Awards Committee um, update. So um, typically, we would start um, believe it or not, we would start working on the 2022, spring 2022 um, awards program. But in talking with um, our team here in the planning department, since the last awards program was pushed back to November due to COVID, um, we've decided to push back the upcoming, uh, the next uh, program to spring 2023. Um, that's sort of twofold, just since you know, one, the last one was pushed back, but also since there was that halt in development and to allow sort of projects to finish. Um, so we actually have some new projects um, to sort of be submitted during that time um, for consideration. Um, so that's that's sort of where we're going with that. And so therefore that what that means is that we will start planning next summer and then the call for nominations will go out probably sometime around September, but usually goes around right after Labor Day, September 2022. Um, we'll put out the call for nominations and then uh, see what goes from there um, if we keep that up. And typically we hold this event usually in the first week or two of June, maybe the last week of May, somewhere in that realm is usually when we hold the program. So we'll, barring anything changing, um, we'll sort of plan on that moving forward. Um, as far as awards and committee, um, award, uh, education awards committee meetings, um, again, until we start meeting sort of in person again, um, well, that meeting will just sort of hold off for that one. Uh, and then trees and woodlands, we did not meet this month. Um, we did um, get sort of confirmation from the city's uh, neighborhood liaisons, community liaison, that the area in which we are looking to hold Roots Day um, this year um, would be a good area that there would be nothing that would sort of from the neighborhood level that would sort of prevent us from holding that um, event there. Um, and for the new members, Roots Day is um, the tree planting event that we do 
usually every year, but last year we were unable to hold it because of COVID. So we are planning that we are going to have it this year. Hopefully everything stays the course and gets better. And we're on, hopefully on our way out of this um, pandemic and we can hold that event. And the area that we are looking to hold this is off of Carver School Road. It's sort of on the west side of Carver School Road, um, sort of south of Airport um, Road. So we're in that, in that general vicinity. So we will pr proceed. I don't know if somebody was going to say something. I don't know who it was. I was asking the date. Just so um, It's usually the third Saturday in October, which would make it uh, the 16th. I'll confirm with George Dolphin, but it's usually the third Saturday in September, in October, sorry, excuse me. And then again, with the Gateways Committee, um, that project's basically been on hold due to COVID. Um, and so once um, we can start meeting in person again, we'll pick that project back up and, and sort of hopefully move it forward to completion. Um, for official report, uh, Tasha, do you have anything you would like to add? No, ma'am, I don't have anything. All right, so old business. Um, we still have two open county uh, positions. For, so if you know anyone um, who would like to be um, participate um, with the board, uh, they just need to go to the county website, which is uh, foresight.cc, and they are on the right-hand side. There's a little box that says um, volunteer opportunities. They can click on that and find the Community Appearance Commission. Those two positions are categorical, so they will need to have some sort of um, experience or education in design, planning, architecture, horticulture, historic preservation, engineering. That's pretty wide open um, for to fulfill those. Anton's back on. Let me, Anton, just pop back in. Let's add him. Anton, now that you're back in, um, I was just wondering if you had uh, any official report you'd like to give. I do not. I just, um, sorry guys, uh, of course, uh, the device that had died in a very inappropriate minute. Uh, just wanted to see when uh, are we planning or if we are planning on um, doing in-person meetings. Well, that's great segue to my next uh, thing under new business. Um, with everything going on, uh, it, it seems like the city is moving towards sort of starting to hold um, meetings in person again. Again, like I've said in the past, we will sort of go by what the city council goes by. Mm -hmm. So as soon as they start holding their meetings in person, um, we will start holding our meetings in person as well. Um, and from what I've been told by Aaron King, who's the director of the department, um, the earliest we've, we've sort of been told or he's been told that that will happen as um, August, which would make sense since the city council does not meet in July. So therefore it'd be a nice, just easy transition back um, um, to sort of finish out June. I think they're gonna start holding their committee meetings in person in June, maybe, um, and then switch back over in August is sort of what is what we've heard so far is to do that. Uh, but I will let you all know if anything changes. If, so everyone keep your fingers crossed that hopefully we can, Zoom's great, but you know, yeah. <laughs> as it, as it comes to a point where you'd like to start seeing people. Right, right exactly. Now, thank you, Amy. No, other than that, I don't think I have anything else at this uh, at moment. That's the only new business that I had. Um, does anybody have anything they'd like to bring up or share or comment on or anything like that? I have a question. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to find out uh, when they might renovate a particular rec center? Um, I've been um, using the old town one fairly regularly and it looks like it really has some leaking roof and wall problems. And I was wondering whether there's a list somewhere. I don't know if there's a list or not. Um, William Royston is the uh, director for that department. Um, so 
he um, would be a good contact. I can reach out to him. Um, and there's other, a couple of other um, individuals in um, recreation and parks I can reach out to to see if they have a list. If that one's not coming to mind um, mm -hmm. as to one that was on the bonds, but sometimes those bond funds get sort of shifted around um, and they may be doing some you know, non-bond fund related, you know, sort of maintenance type renovations that I'm- Yeah, from what I've seen, the, the guys that are out there are not the ones that they need. I think they truly have a roof leak, yeah. Um, so. Yeah, but um, I will check in with the um, Recreation and Parks Department to see okay. and let us know. Um, one, to see specifically about Old, um, old Town. Yes. And then, um, two, to see if there actually is a list somewhere where they have a schedule yeah. out to, to fix those things. Um, uh, is there anything else that anyone would like to bring up, talk about, share, comment on? I am not seeing anything. So with that, we'll adjourn the meeting. I hope everyone has a good holiday weekend. You Enjoy too. Yourself. Thank you, Amy. You too, thank you, Amy. Thank you. And thank I also you. wanted to, yeah, and thank I also wanted to welcome the new members too as well. Thank, thank you. you guys. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate that. Yeah.